Hey, what's up guys? John here. I believe we're witnessing the beginning stages of the biggest real estate transformation in history. You know, just over what Joe Biden just recently said. It's pretty shocking. He wants to make cities much more dense. And so he's going to be financially incentivizing local governments around the country to bring in more people. Now, so what is this going to look like to property owners in certain cities? Let's say, for example, you live in a city and there's 10 million people in that city and the local government's incentivized to take in an additional 20% or an additional 40% or additional 50%. What would this actually do to real estate values in the market? Your single family home, right? It's gonna be a very unique shift, a very big transformation. This coupled with a big move into manufactured housing, which could likely bring down the cost of housing. Plus, they're gonna be investing in hundreds of thousands of properties all throughout the country to really bring in more affordable housing. But what does this really look like? This looks like a huge, huge overreach into the real estate space. And I think that this is gonna have a massive impact on real estate. And I think we all need to pay close attention to it because this is all being tied and incorporated into the rising cost of living, whether it be through high gas prices, high food prices, high insurance costs, everything is getting much more expensive. And so as more people get priced out, they're gonna be demanding a solution. What is that solution gonna look like? To Joe Biden, he believes that the solution is very well going to be affordable housing. So here's what's going on. Why high housing costs could keep climbing. Sky high mortgage rates and construction slowdown could push record rents and home prices even higher, further threatening housing affordability for millions of Americans. Economists say that rising mortgage rates should cool down the housing market, red hot appreciation in the short term, but are also likely to drive up rents. New construction of houses and apartments are waning, suggesting that the national meager, meager housing supply won't improve anytime soon. It's a perfect storm right now, said National Association of Home Builders, Jerry Howard. I don't think I've ever seen this many red flags at one time in my entire career. Total housing starts fell 14.3% from April to May, reaching 13 month low. According to the Commerce Department, data released last week, construction of multifamily housing, which includes apartments plummeted 23.7% month over month. Home builders expected that trend to continue, warning that they're under pressure from rising interest rates, global supply chain, higher material costs, and a shortage of workers, and other issues that are slowing down new construction the building slowdown comes as home prices remain at record highs. An average home in America sells for $430,000, according to real estate brokerage Redfin, which found that home prices rose 14.8% over the last year and 60% in the last five years. The price appreciation is driven by dwindling housing supply that took a deep dive during the pandemic. Less than 1.5 million homes were listed for sale last month, down 2.4 million the same period the last five years. Those looking for new, for lower cost homes are running out of options. Builders aren't erecting many houses that first time home buyers can afford because the current environment makes it difficult for them to turn a profit on those projects, Howard said. The first time home buyer is being squeezed, which also squeezes renters because of those people no longer are moving out of their apartments and so rents are gonna be moving up, he added. Rents have steadily risen alongside housing prices. Redfin found that the median rents, you know, two grand a month. I've covered that before. Now, when we look at what's happening here, what we're seeing is the chart, the house price to rent ratio since 1980. Right at 2006, 2007, right at the all time high, we're basically, you know, we're, we're there, right? But this time around, we have inflation, we have, you know, we have supply chain bottlenecks, we have problems that we didn't have uh, about 14 years ago. Then, although we expect rent price growth to continue to slow in the coming months, it will likely remain high, causing ongoing affordability issues for renters. Redfin Deputy Chief Economist Taylor Marr said in a note, adding that mortgages have outpaced rents in some areas and more Americans are choosing to live alone. Advocates have warned that the affordability crisis will lead to increased homelessness. A recent US census study found that 8.8 .8 million Americans were behind on rent payments from late last April to early May, up from 1.7 million individuals one year ago. The Federal Reserve interest rates hiked interest rates by 75 basis points last week in the fight to cool down the nation's surging inflation. The move, which will make it more expensive to build new homes, 
prompted the average 30-year fixed rate mortgage to rise 5.78%, the highest mark in over a decade, according to Fannie Mae. Now, when they throw out numbers like 5.78%, that is if you are a borrower with a 720, 740 credit score with very, very strong income, a very you know, reliable job, you have to really be a, a perfect borrower. If you have a 685 credit score or a 795 credit score, like in the range of the average American, you're not gonna get a, an interest rate of 5.78%. You're likely gonna be somewhere in the mid to high sixes at best, and that is soon to likely change. Higher mortgage rates are pricing first time buyers out of the market. Under current 30 year rates, this monthly payment on a $430,000 loan is 2,500 bucks up from 1800 a month ago. Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell acknowledged that home prices might keep going up for a while, even in a world where rates are going up, and indicated that first-time home buyers should stay on the sidelines for now. I would say if you're a home buyer or a young person looking to buy a home, you need to you need a bit of a reset. Powell said during a press conference, we need to get back to a place where supply and demand are back together and where inflation is down low again and mortgage rates low again. It's unclear when that will be. Some economists point to May home comp completions increasing 9.3% year over year, including a 33.2% increase on multifamily completions as one reason to be optimistic that housing supply will recover. Others like Powell are hoping that comp completion of massive supply of unfinished homes that have been delayed by some supply chain issues and labor shortages, home builders warn that those delays will continue to plague the construction of new homes. The U.S. faces a shortfall of 1.5 million homes, according to a study of Moody's Analytics, and that number could continue to rise as more millennials look to buy their own houses. The National Low Income Housing Coalition estimates that the U.S. has a shortage of 7 million rental homes that are affordable for extremely low-income renters. And here's what Biden is saying right now. Joe Biden announced an action plan that attempts to close the housing shortfall within five years. The White House aims to incentivize local governments to build denser cities with more affordable housing, create new finance mechanisms for manufactured homes, expand federal financing, and rehabilitate hundreds of thousands of homes, among other measures. The plan's policy to boost supply are important element of bringing home ownership within reach for Americans who today cannot find affordable homes because there are too, there are too few homes for sale in communities. The White House said in a statement. You got to ask yourself, if you're living in a big city and let's say you own a nice home there, wouldn't it make sense to look into this to see if your city is going to be impacted by this? Maybe you, maybe you bought a beautiful little house right beside a park. It was a very quiet suburb just outside of the city. And maybe the building codes are actually changing or things are going to be changing to where there's going to be an influx of people that are going to be coming in to that area in the next two to five years. It would make sense, in my opinion, to look into this to see if this is going to be coming to a city near you. I believe that we're going to likely see not 5 million or 10 million people. I think we could see 50 million, 100 million people that are going to need affordable housing over the next five years if the current trends continue, right? If inflation continues, gas prices continue, supply chain problems only progressively get worse, everything gets progressively worse, then we could see a situation in which this actually becomes a, a landmark thing where you know American real estate changes in a really big way. But I do believe you know, smart entrepreneurs are paying attention to this. I think really big opportunities are going to be in, available in the real estate space. What do you think about this entire situation? Drop your comments below. Hit the like button. Hit the like button. YouTube's going to share this content to educate more people about what's going on in the housing market. And subscribe. You're also subscribed to my second YouTube channel. It's going to be an interactive call-in show this upcoming week. The link for that is down below, pinned to the top comment. And follow me on Instagram, TikTok, LinkedIn, Twitter up top in the banner. And if you need help with your credit score, getting your credit fixed, you want to learn about real estate investing, you, maybe you want to get started on YouTube, join my private community. It was bi-weekly calls with me, private Discord channel. Join the community, cashnow.video, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.